Fingers knows I'm joking with him. We were in the same house before. Oh, that's sad for Nine Fingers. I feel sorry for you, buddy. That's yeah, he was like like literally every single fight, territory war wise, is just absolutely it's terrible. You have to like drag oh. him kicking and screaming to do anything. Like, oh, when he would tackle the supply point over in, so he's just running off doing what he wants on the, on the walls with his fucking iron cap swordsman instead of like his uh, Keshigs or something. Oh, geez, absolutely oh. useless player. <laughs> okay, so so far we're going to start up the match up here. Uh, Pawn guard are defending. Ninety one percent of chat thinks the uh, Pawn guard are going to be the the winners of this one against nine percent for uh, Rose. So interesting to see how this ends. Um, Attacker wise, Nadaches. Look at them. There's there's three Nadaches and the attack has two muskets, a few pole axes, George Sarson, Six and a few more. Pikes though for for Pom Guard. Pikes are gonna be well, I wonder if they're gonna maybe rotate from the muskets or something as well. First, yeah, like maybe. To get a lot of bombs off at the beginning. Yeah, but it's interesting to start with pikes instead of the muskets. So the we start with the muskets for the actual damage the they could do to siege towers rather than the pikes. Interesting. I think they're but. just gonna let the siege towers get in though, look, because they've got I sent the cat bring falcon it is, but they've got no javelins either to take siege towers down. They've got no shenges at the beginning. Yeah. Why are they starting with iron caps? I suppose iron caps can do work if they've got a front line. That's a lot of berserkers for both and teams. Cap so. swordsman for Watson and is a long. Yeah, Watson is a long, but those fantastic player. I don't know where he does it or how he does it, but he seems to pull pull out with like so many kills. Like I don't know if he just snipes everybody's like almost dead heroes, but he always seems to find them. He always seems to hit them. <laughs> he does so much damage with it, but. We'll be interested to see how the strategy works for them because, like you said, so many pikes. And yeah, they can do damage and stuff. They're really good hero killers and potentially, but. It's Four pole axes as well for both teams is interesting, especially it's when like, you think that the rune for CC immunity has been removed. Yeah, it's all this CC about <laughs> units that. Yeah, the units, heroes classes, don't it? Like, there's so many things that can uh, CC them with a. Uh, and just pin heroes down, maybe that's their, their goal. They're just trying to pin the heroes as much as possible and take them out of the battle. But we'll wait and see how uh, how Pongard deal with this one and uh, how Rose uh, focus their attack here because there's not going to be a sally out. There isn't cavalry, so there isn't really much cavalry in general. They, they might still sally out, though. They've got a lot in the, the, the gatehouse. They've got a lot on the side gate as well. They're actually coming out the side gate as well. With a Berserker rush by the looks of it. It's all Berserkers on the defense. All Berserkers on the attackers as well, though. They change very quickly to Berserkers. So it's Berserker, Berserker. And the front gate comes out here. It's going to be interesting, this one here. This is similar to kind of what happened last match. So. But instead of Cavalry, it's uh, just units of Berserkers going everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And because both teams have got the same units, it's going to be very even, the fight. It's basically going to be going to whoever gets the most of their Berserker rages off wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, if you, it's gonna go down. If you and close the, it up, the like, defenders uh, have got an advantage because they can get their berserker edge up killing peasants. Yeah, they're clever about it. And that's what they're doing. They're going to, down towards the the battering ram there with their berserkers, making sure they're picking off them ones. Then there's a few other heroes around here fighting. That's palace guards here as well. Takaku is the first one to die by God Apostle with picking up that unit kill with his units. Um, a lot of attackers just changed to cab as well, which is going to be rough for the berserkers to deal with. Especially like winged assars and monastics and stuff. But even Keshig should do pretty well against them, to be fair. Defenders picked up some uh, some cavalry as well there, though, so that's uh, going to work kind of two and two. They're kind of doing a similar idea, but we'll go out with berserkers and then swap into cav. So, interesting. You know why? They've only got one easy. outriders, haven't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. And defense, yeah, that's it. I think so far the attackers have done slightly better. Even though it says that they've lost more troops, they've just lost like three units of peasants, pretty much. Yeah, three units of peasants. And then actual units, nothing. they've not really lost much. And whereas the the defenders that have sallied out have lost a lot of berserkers. A lot of heroes dying, though, in terms of the defending side. Uh, the attacker side, sorry, they're down to 11. But it is 12 yeah. uh, for the defenders. So we're pretty even now. It's matched up here. Two nice is trying to, to pick off here. Should have scav the two moles trying to pick off in the dash here. And the is just trolling them as you can survive for almost ever, which is a nightmare. But if you're a mole, you don't want to be trying to deal with that because as soon as you're stunned, you know, that the dash is just going to deal so much damage and heal up so quickly. And he seems to be chasing them, the moles back into the gateway here. But it's a good it's a good slowdown tactic. It definitely works for a slowdown tactic. I'm not sure it's going to be an overall game changer with that wee little sally nah. out that happened there we're kind of even think if we could see kills. the leadership that was lost i think I'd, I'd put money on that pond guard lost more leadership on that fight 
Yeah, it looks they've actually lost more units in overall anyway. So yeah, hundred they're ten units more. I'm just under that now, but yeah, so overall they've definitely lost more leadership, but also more units of general as well. So be interesting. I mean to that's, see that's how almost it like hundred and forty odd uh, berserkers that were just lost on that fight there. Not all because they had like I think they had like a unit of palace guards and a couple of other things as well, but it was mainly berserkers. Mm hmm The attackers have got the side gate as well, kinda. Just like yeah, a hero so kill fest going on, unit berserkers as well. Oh, yep, yeah, we're gonna try and zoom into that, but you see what we can see over there. I think the defenders have got enough stuff there now, the attackers are gonna pull back. They've only got two heroes there and like half a unit of berserkers now. Yeah, there's a couple of units there and heroes there. Too many to deal with for uh, just heroes and a couple of berserkers, and there's nothing really we can do. And the gate got closed as well, so yeah. it's more of a defensive strategy there for them. So we've got nine minutes left. They've not really used any trebs, just started to use them now. A couple of units actually moved into that treb there as well, which uh, works in favour of the attackers. So. Yeah, the but attackers no look like they're towers. probably going to get all three towers up as well, looking at it. Yeah, they've managed to keep the players from any distracted a little bit so they can still keep them pushed so that they're not actually damaging. And they've actually got rid of most of the artillery on the walls as well, at least the ones that are in a position to damage the siege towers. There's only one actual cannon up. Yeah, in a position to do all. Uh, Hawatch, isn't it? It's literally Hawatch. Yeah. Can deal damage. That's it, and it's not going to deal enough damage to get the, to stop the siege towers getting to the wall. So all they could fire right siege towers all over the authority, and then you're going to get the two centre ones coming up just a second as well. And the main gate is going to get destroyed in a sec as well. Once the battering rams there, they should maybe look at getting rid of those fire pots though. That's what's only going to kill village watchmen, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, it's not a massive deal. I wonder if Pongard are going to pull off as soon as they get up onto the wall, though. I think they will. They're... I think they're going to give A here and then defend in the back here on the stairwells. And yeah, towards it looks the like it. Looks like Yeah, it. they're definitely all jumping off now, as you can see. They've not really swapped out many of their pike players, though. There's still a lot of pike players there. Um, some of them have changed out for uh, muskets, though. Yeah, this is like a more a more standard defense strategy from Pondguard, and then it might, it's going to be interesting to see if um, <clears throat> Rose do the once they get A, if they do the hero rush, die like try to pick off strong units and do the 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 respawn on the side gate. The attacker then dash is just going to try and kill them Iron Cap Swordsman because he's going to get three kills from it easy. If I was that Iron Cap Swordsman, I've, my charge is like three seconds. I'd have been charging him straight away. Just any direction, yeah. hoping I could kick, pick off some heroes, because that's a good hero killer, Iron Cap Swordsman, when you get them. That's from Watson, Watson, though. Watson's on the supply. I think he um, oh, just double tap C him, and they got ruined. I suppose it's only Iron Cap, so what, it's 110 leaderships. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. He's got his flames out now, though. You can sort of pu push one and randomly pull it in any direction, hoping that you'll pull off a charge, even if you know you're going to die anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. Naturally. But that's why I played on it, anyway. I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was so annoyed a couple of seasons ago when they ner nerfed the uh, Iron Cap Swordsman. I had some disgusting doctrines on my Iron Cap Swordsman. My and people, when I was streaming, were like, Why are your Iron Cap Swordsman just killing everything? And I was just chuckling because I had like loads of purple doctrines on them. Yeah, that's and what they're like, like. What? Why have well. you got that on there? And I was like, Have you seen these guys? They're disgusting. Yeah, and they nerfed their charge got damage. All the char <laughs> uh, did they actually nerf the charge damage? Because I felt like they nerfed not the as charge strong. damage a bit, yeah. Yeah, because I was like, getting like three four hero kills and stuff and them just charging back and forward every like two seconds because the charge cooldowns and stuff i was just that quick the thing is i i uh opted not to have the charge cooldown doctrine on i had like all just pure damage because i thought the 13 seconds is actually enough because normally you could you could charge in pull out reset and then charge back in like like by the time you'd done it you were almost at 13 seconds anyway it felt like was that so like i was like i'll just seconds? leave it it's like if you have everything on, it's like three seconds. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. ridiculous. Uh, mine's just so quick, like so quick. Oh, them flames though from there we go. Pond the push comes in from the the Yeah, they've got the yeah the ones at the bottom of the stairs. You've also got a good push coming you know, in with the sentry grenadiers under the. Oh no, that's Javcam. Javcam in the, under the under the gateway there, trying to. The attacking work, flames from Monteki look like uh, I don't know if they've glitched, but they don't. Oh, now they're shooting. I was gonna say they don't really look like they're shooting properly. Pongard are trying to jump out on over the barricade onto them. They've got in as well, so they've got rid of their flames. Pongard have done Did a he... great job here on this defense, though. It looks like in terms of heroes by. I think they won unit-wise as well. Yeah, it looks like yeah. They, look, they definitely clawed back a few of the uh, unit kills there as well. I think though, 
We were winning the hero fight. Um, yeah, it looks like Rose got rid of the flames as well that Pomgard had up. So both teams managed to wipe out the flames from each team. There's a fight going on in the five point as well fight. just now. Definitely won that fight. More Pongar players there. There's only four heroes left and three of them. A couple more Rose them, heroes in the back there. dying now. The thing is now though, every yeah, there we go, Rose has respawned at the side gate. Everyone from Pongard's at the, the, the western uh, eastern supply, sorry, and everyone from Rose is gonna spawn in the west. And uh, get yeah, through ready, the side gate really quickly. Ready to that supply point, ready to block And then they'll go there. for like the west supply, the one next to the respawn from the defenders. And they've got through as well, so the the, the defenders can't even stop them now. Yo, Rocky, thank you for the raid, buddy. Fight. Appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, guys, everybody from the stream. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Three minute delay, so you will see it pop up very, very soon. We really do. Thank you. You're watching Rose versus Point Guard here, guys. There we go. That's it. That's the calf charge going yeah, over the Rose supply got point. That supply point pretty quickly. And they're going as well. straight Looks towards like home. A few then guys straight well. onto the home point. Watson's already seen it in uh, ASM entry as well. So they should be able to stop him from capping there. But I think Rose are going to get the western oh, supply. Oh, the Hussar charge is going to charge straight into wall. Cool. And the big chunk comes just coming through the main gates. So they're going to get the eastern supply for free. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, I've muted myself. I was wondering why I was speaking to you there and it wasn't working. <laughs> I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> They've not managed to get the supply yet, but they have got a lot more heroes going towards that home point here. But there's so many different battles going on in different areas it's of the map. It's so strong out. Time, it's so. like it's, there's a fight going on base point. I'm going to concentrate on that for the time being. Charge coming through from Rose. Now it looks like they're actually going to clear base point. They've got, only yeah, two they've heroes got from the Rose hero there. advantage. Not really yeah. units. And then I think they've got unit advantage as well. If they could push your units past the point here now and then get it towards that's the supply. What they're doing now. They've got a lot of cab as well, haven't they, Rose? Yeah. That's the worst thing about it though, Modell's coming around the corner here from Gilcho, but the tre the Treb's going to be in a, a good spot here, it might actually deal some damage to the, the Modell that's they, the corner. They're going to have to push because they're capping, but yep. they're not actually pushing. There, and the guys with the, the cap, cavalry though, should just try getting is. into their flames, really. Oh, there's Winged Assas coming in from Pongard now though, but the barricade's in the way, so they're not going to get oh, cool. fully through. Yeah, they, they've... They're getting stopped for the most part there. Siki gets a, gets knocked down there. A few heroes dying though. It's 10v10 here. And the, that wing, the star charge coming actually back. actually did pretty well, man. Because it was stacked up. Like, they were like almost single file along the wall when they charge. Mm -hmm. He might, might have positioned them in the formation for that. So you could do that. You know how you got the line formation for his hours. Mm. If he was, if he, yeah, no, what, he's a good player for them. So he probably would have done something like that. Um, but yeah, we've already half capped it with six minutes to go here, and it's so far. On, on guard, I got control now, though. We're pretty even on units. It's like 200 versus 275. Um, 10 trebs available, but it looks like Pong Guard have managed to push them out here. They're yeah, getting 12, a hero kill advantage in their favor, yeah. and that's what they keep trying to pick off as many heroes as possible. 12 Mo grabs Sankusu <laughs> here, and he's going to die as well. Critical with a quad kill. But yeah, it looks 35 like. 35 to 20 hero kills. Upon so guard. To this last one here, the last push is going to be a hero battle, and it doesn't look like Rose is winning these hero fights. Nah. So having that many pikes for Pond guard is actually huge because they've got a, a lot more DPS hero yeah. wise, and obviously because pike pikes have got a lot of disengage abilities, they can just dance around all day. And Pond guard are pushed out; they're not sitting on base point; they've actually pushed out, which is interesting. Is that maybe so yeah, they can they're... just try catching them out as they're spawning? If you catch them, yeah, we just spawn with their no units and stuff. You could potentially cap. They, they kill the heroes before their units fully spawned and then usable and stuff but very very unlikely that will happen but it's a very good way to kind of slow them down at the gateway to to waste time with a couple of heroes at least anyway but yeah, the way that uh, Pongard have rotated around they've got units everywhere so you don't want to get Rose caught have out got multiple heroes no units as well i was saying that's so Pongard. yeah but, but there's only like 200 there's less than 300 each on each team at least one's got 200 one's got 259 so very close in terms of that keshik's can't believe my eyes for the quinn <laughs> Oh, actually, Pongar I like what Pongard have done here. It looked here. like they'd spread. Yeah, yeah. Very strong position. It's basically not trebable either where they're sat at. Mm -hmm. and, and the only way that. Easy access. You have to go all the way along the long way to get to the. Yeah, to point. the west side. And if they go the west side, though, it's so easy for Pongard to, to like, counter rotate against them. That's a good treb, though. How much of that treb actually hits, though, with these walls and the big, big buildings? None of it. Oh, wait a minute. One. That one does. <laughs> that one will as well. Oh. That one does as well. There's there's three of them hitting. That's not a bad trip. Now they're going to go for the Western Supply. Now Rose, yeah, they're going to start trying to bait them across and move uh, Get them in a position that's actually trebable. 
That's another unit there. That's, that's a good treb. trebable if it stays there. Watson's units are that's there. That's a good the treb. That hits a couple that of units there, but Watson starts to move them. He sees the Ajax is uh, going around with cavalry around the back here on the supply point before Brasio are trying to stop that from the spawn. He just managed to get past him with the majority of his unit. Yeah, is that armor gears as well on it? So it's going to be that cover commander if he can pick off. Yeah. Watson I think he's here. trying to get behind him. Oh, that's bad. That, well, that's a good treb, but it's going to stop Ajax getting in there with his cavalry. Yeah, Ajax can't do anything either. There's Modal there, so you're not going to send your armor gears into the Modal there down there in the no. corner. But you should maybe just concentrate getting rid of Watson and start capping the point. Yeah, I would probably say the exact same thing here. As basically as the Pike player, Watson's not going to be able to deal with that. Although Pongard are just being wiped in the main fight, man. They've just got five, five, five heroes. Five heroes left, yeah. The boss also stops that, but the main fight is getting pushed forward back. They're going straight to home because they realize the numbers are down. And it's all about how quickly they can respawn back in here. Rose, Rose have done push. really well there. They need to get everything on base and hope that they can get stuff killed quick enough that they can cap. Units are coming in. Though, they're not full got spawn now. They've not got defensive units. It's 80 units, so they've got against 100. But it's in favour of Rose here because this. The pawn guard is all sporadic. They're not going to all come on at the same time. They're not. They're all coming yeah, on one by like one. Intervals and the units have got a slow. They've got a fort of Brachio and a Cilidar, both strong yeah, units, go, but they're Zerka really mode slow. Gets picked off. There's a critical. who's <laughs> going to jump on a point of sledge me and the two pole axes trying to survive as long as possible. Here comes they might critical. just do this Cav though. If those pole axes can stay alive, Mister no, Billy's that's coming in now as critical well. Critical as well. Billy that's D. It. Billy D's been stopped though, GG. That is well played, well Rose. Done from Rose. That was an interesting battle strategy there. Like, didn't look like that it was, was going to be there. That was a scrappy but... fight, weren't it? Like, that was <laughs> swings and roundabouts. Like, there was points where both teams looked like they were just going to win easy. Yeah, and then all of a sudden... I'd say that it was like... mainly Pondguard though, until like, like, right up to the minute where it looked like Pondguard had the advantage. Because they had like, um, until like, the end of that fight, it was what, 180 to... No, 250, sorry, to 170 units yeah. still left on. And, and the trebs, Rose... like we said, worked in their favour, yeah. I think. The trebs definitely managed to hit, even though they don't look like they're trebable areas, they managed to hit like at least two or three of the trebs, taking the unit down advantage to pretty much the exact same. And then, when we were watching the, the little fight going for the home point, it was just wiping the heroes um, very, very quickly from Pongard. And then Your Mighty says this must be a fashionable fight. Uh, it's drawn the finest to see that. that was a... Was, wasn't expected for me, and uh, nah, no that was chat expected that, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was this really well played. I think a really good thing from Rose as well, I think people. the one thing that helped him in that, that, that blob fight towards the Western Supply was, they still had a full unit of flames up, and that, mm -hmm. the, all of the defenders were in that corridor, and they were all in one big blob, and flames in a situation like that absolutely ruined things. Yeah, Unfortunately, definitely. we can't actually click on the player and then what unit they had to look what kills they did. But I guarantee whoever had those flames at the end there did absolute work to to ruin Pongard's um, units. And obviously they stunlock heroes as well, so that's probably why they dropped so many heroes so quickly. Yeah, just stunlock them. They were all trying to kill them probably and jumping into them, which makes it easier to kill them as well. But uh, obviously you can die quite quickly to them as well. So yeah, tough, tough, uh, tough going for Pongard. It looked like they were in a solid position to defend it there with that last setup at the end there, but... Um, Rose found their way around it, managed to use the trebs and the rotation of their units and heroes around the point uh, to their advantage. Um, we'll go speak about the, the MVP here for the, the attackers uh, from Rose. you got Kobaji. Oh, Kobaj Kobaji? No, Kobaji. Co Kobaj Leko, I think. I have no clue. I think I butcher his name every single Kobaj time Leko. as well. <laughs> it's something like that. I'll just say Kobaji because <laughs> that makes more sense to me. Um, but yeah, he's, he's our MVP. He didn't get any hero kills, but the 10 assists, 75 unit kills. Tataku in second place in Adachi with 7 hero kills. You've got Bongo Malay with 8 hero kills. So yeah, boys killing heroes near the end there. Definitely near the end where they, they started to pile the, the hero kills up. Um, defense uh, adapt with the MVP three hero kills eight assists and eighty four unit kills, and uh, the most hero kills on the defending side goes to God's Apostle. I think he gets up the eight, yeah, eight and then you've yeah. got Guilt Show down at the bottom there with five. So yeah, overall, it was, it was pretty even. Like forty one hero deaths on both sides. 